We all know the story. Lonely Queen of Amazons makes baby from clay, which then grows up, escapes to man's world, and promptly fights doctors, lots of doctors, cheetahs, psychos, and kills lords. Ah, Princess Diana, you are an inspiration. And today, I am super inspired to sketch the number one hero in DC's trinity. Yes, better than Batman. Batman forever! I'll fight you. I'll fight you. Hey guys, Andrew here and welcome to Comic Booker. All things comics from a creator. Wonder Woman is a character that excites me more than most. No, not for that reason. She's exciting because I think she's a creative challenge for a lot of creators. From her sexy bondage feminism to her warrior of peace dichotomy. I feel like half the time, creators struggle to juggle all those complex aspects of her character. So for every great Wonder Woman story, like these ones, there are scores of boring, mediocre, unexciting Wonder Woman stories that clog up the bargain bin. Anyway, I think she's an awesome character, not least because she is one of the few A-list superheroes with firm roots in Greek mythology, which we all know is the source of a lot of the archetypes still in play in adventure fiction today. Today, I'm gonna be drawing Wonder Woman using my favorite mobile watercolor setup. Let's go to the invisible jet! Okay, so I can't actually go anywhere right now because of the quarantine. But uh, trust me when I say it's a good idea to have a mobile sketching watercolor setup uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's a way to do quick sketches in color. Number two, it's a low friction way to practice painting. Three, it's, uh, it's not gonna break the bank and it's, it's super fun. One last thing before we start. There's probably like three dozen different ways you could approach this activity. And this is just to give you kind of a peek into my personal process. Okay, cool. Let's get started. So you can definitely just get started with watercolor sketching by applying paint directly onto the paper, using the brush to explore and refine your sketch as you go. But if you're like me or many other watercolor artists, you may want to begin with a finer tool to lay in the structure of the drawing. This guy. This is a 0.5 mechanical pencil filled with HB lead, and I like it because you get a stable graphite line that you never have to sharpen. I use this to sketch out a linear drawing for the watercolors to sit in. It can be as loose or as tight as you're comfortable with, but for this one, because I'm on video, I'm gonna make it tight. For erasers, I'm using a basic white vinyl eraser, which allows me to do very broad, quick corrections if I need it. The focus of this pencil drawing is to give a solid structure to my sketch, so I don't need to worry about anatomy or proportion and just have fun when I get to the watercolor paints. With the sketch pretty much solidified, I'm ready to start painting. Before I even pick up the brush, I use a little spray bottle to wet the paint pans and activate the watercolors ahead of time. This will give me a thin layer of wet paint that I can just pick up and mix with. For the longest time, my favorite on-the-go watercolor set was this Sakura Koi Watercolors 24 half pan set with its built-in extendable palette, its sponges, and the portable plastic case. But I've since moved on to this Schminky Academy 20 half pan set, which is roomy and light and has tons of mixing space. And also, I just like the look of it. For paint application, I have this handy dandy Pentel Aquash water brush, my favorite tool in this setup by far. It has a plastic water barrel attached to a nylon tip, so no need to carry around a container full of water. Just squeeze the brush against a napkin to clean the tip and you're good to go. I start laying down some flesh tones and light colors. With watercolor, you're always working from the lightest light, which is the white of the paper, towards the darkest dark. 
So it's good to start with broad light washes. For this sketch, I'm using a Canson Mixed Media XL sketchbook with 98 pound paper. It's not watercolor paper, which is baseline 140 pounds, but it's halfway there and it will take a few washes like a champ without buckling. It's also two times cheaper than watercolor paper, which costs a little bit more for half the number of pages. I won't get into price comparisons here, but I think this paper is a good balance between quality and quantity for the price. When I work on mixed media paper, I keep in mind that I have a limit to the amount of water I can apply to the sketch. So I try to keep washes to a minimum. Too much water will cause the paper to buckle, warp, or even tear. I try to mix the color I need on my palette before I apply it. It's also a good painterly habit to get into, even in other mediums like acrylic and oil. Thinking ahead of time results in cleaner work and more deliberate paint strokes. There's a window of a few seconds when you apply a paint stroke where you can move pigment around while it's still wet. So I use the very tip of the brush to nudge paint where I want it to sit the most. On a side note, these are student grade watercolors I'm using, which means that A, they're much cheaper, and B, they're less light fast. That means that they fade faster when exposed to sunlight and may fade anyway in a year or two. Here's a page from my sketchbook from two years ago where the koi watercolors have clearly desaturated over time. I don't mind this so much because these are just sketches, but if you're concerned about keeping your watercolors looking the same for years and the general archival quality, you may want to upgrade to pricier professional watercolors. When all areas are covered, I look over the sketch and ask myself whether the piece has enough range and value. Usually this is fixed by giving yourself an area or two where you've applied the darkest dark that you can. In this piece, those areas are Diana's hair, her eyes, and the rivets under her belt. And here's the final watercolor sketch. This took me about 30 minutes and I had a lot of fun doing it. And that's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you picked up a thing or two from it. I've listed all the materials below with links. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that bell icon so you get a notification when a new video pops up. And sound off in the comments, let me know if there are any characters you guys want to see me sketch in the future. Until next video, this is Andrew from Comic Booker signing off. Peace! You okay? What happened? I hit my head. On what? On the invisible jet! <laughs>